Okay, so we're going to continue with that 2.4 today. It's going to start off very exactly like what we finished on on Monday. It's going to give us two functions. So on number six, the two functions that it gives us is f of x equals negative 11x plus 5. And g of x equals x squared plus 14. And it wants me to find f of 1 times g of 1. So just like what we did on Monday, I'm going to find this f of 1, that g of 1. And then when I get those two solutions, I'm going to come back and this one says to multiply them together. So let's find f of 1 first which tells me to go to my f function and replace its x with a 1. So if I do that, I'll have negative 11 times 1 plus 5. So negative 11 times 1 gives me negative 11. Bring down that plus 5. Negative 11 plus 5 gives me negative 6. So there's your f of 1. Now I need to go and find g of 1. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to put the 1 in the g function in place of its x. So if I do that, I'll have 1 squared plus 14. So 1 squared is still 1. Bring down my plus 14. And 1 plus 14 gives me 15. So once you get the two solutions, again, backtrack to the original problem and look at what it tells you to do with your two answers. And this one says to multiply those together. So negative 6 times 15 gives me negative 90. Right? Number 7. Same kind of thing. F of x is negative 11x plus 17. G of x is x squared plus 11. And this time it wants us to find f of negative 2 over g of negative 2. So same thing, I'm going to find f of negative 2. Get an answer. I'm also going to find g of negative 2 and get its answer. And then I'm going to put the f solution over the g solution and see what I can do from there. So let's see, f of negative 2. So go into f. Replacing its x with negative 2 will give me negative 11 times negative 2 plus 17. Right? Negative times a negative, so that gives me positive 22 plus 17. When I add that together, I get 39. So there's the f of negative 2. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find g of negative 2. I replace this x with negative 2 squared plus 11. And remember, if you're squaring in your calculator, you need to put a parenthesis around that negative 2. Okay? If you don't put a parenthesis around your negative 2 and you type it in like this, here's what you're telling your calculator to do. You're telling it to only square the 2 and then bring down the negative. So that's why that would tell you negative 4. Okay, so I want to tell my calculator not to square two, to square negative two. So that's when you would get the right answer of positive four plus 11, which gives me 15. Once I get my two answers, I go back and I say, okay, what do they want me to do? 
me to do with those. They want me to put the first one over the second one. So now I have 39 over 15. If that is not simplified, I need to simplify it. So if you're not 100% for sure, this one does simplify because three goes into both of those. But remember, you can also simplify fractions in your calculator, right? Just type in your whatever your fraction is. So 39 divided by 15, it'll give you a decimal. And then just math, enter, enter that. So math button, enter twice to show you what that does reduce to, which is 13 over 5. Number eight, more of this. F of X is negative two X plus four. G of X is X squared plus five. It wants me to find f plus g of x. Now, I have found that I think it's clearer of what it's asking me to do if I write this a different way. f plus g of x is the same thing as saying f of x plus g of x. Okay? These two things say the same thing. Okay? We actually did one of these or a couple of these on Monday. So what do I need to do? Just like I've been doing earlier, I need to find f of x. I need to find g of x. And then once I find both of those solutions, I'm gonna add them together. It's just that when I'm finding f of x, what is f? I'm not replacing it. The x is already an x, right? So f of x is, negative 2x plus 4. I can't simplify that. g of x is x squared plus 5. So I've got both my solutions. What does it want me to do to them? Add them together in this case. So if I add these together, I have negative 2x plus 4 plus x squared plus 5. And remember, when we're adding, adding is just a very simple term to say, or simple way to say, combine your like terms. That's what adding is, is combining like terms. The only terms that look like they can go together are that four and that five can be written together, right? The only reason to write those separately, okay? Remember, to be a like term, you have to have the same letter and exponent. Now, when you write your solution, you always start with the term that has the highest exponent and then go down from there. So I start with the x squared, then the minus 2x, and then I'm putting, like I said, putting the 4 and 5 together to make that plus 9. Number 9. F of x is 5x minus 9. G of x is 2x minus 5. This time it wants me to find f minus g of x, which is the same thing as saying f of x minus g of x. So you really need to be careful when you are subtracting, more so than when you're adding, to make sure that you don't make a sign mistake. F of x is 5x minus 9. G of x, 2x minus 5. 
We didn't even simplify those any more than what they are. So I am doing what with those? Subtracting. So I have this function minus 2x minus 5. What's missing right here that I didn't write that I need? Parentheses. If not, this, if I'm saying minus 2x minus 5, that this, if I don't put parentheses around that, I'm just subtracting the first part of that. I want to subtract all of g of x, not just the first part of it, all of it. So this has, you're subtracting that whole thing. So do you see how that could make a sign mistake? Because what does this mean I need to do now? Distribute that. So that's going to actually turn that to what? Plus. That's where the sign mistake occurs. So before I combine like terms, I am going to distribute that minus sign. So I'll bring down the 5x minus 9. Distribute. Turns that to minus 2x, which I would have gotten. But this turns this to plus 5. And then combine your like terms. Let's see. I can put the 5x and the minus 2x together. So I really just have 3x. And I can also put this negative 9 and positive 5 together to get minus 4. So again, just be careful when you're subtracting function that you put that second function that you're subtracting in parentheses and distribute the negative before you combine your like terms. Okay, I think 10 is going to be similar. Yep. Negative 5x plus 2. And g of x is x squared minus 5. This time it wants me to find G minus F of X. So be careful here. They did flip flop the G and the F this time. So I'm finding G of X minus F of X this time. So g of x first, and what is g of x? All right, x squared minus 5, and I'm going to find my f of x, which is already found for me, right? f of x is negative 5x plus 2, good. So I can't simplify them, so I go ahead and find the mathematical operation that I'm using here, which is subtracting the g1, which is x squared minus 5. Again, minus. So I want to make sure I'm subtracting the whole thing. So put what you're subtracting in parentheses. What am I subtracting? Negative 5x plus 2. Close. And distribute. So bring down the x squared. Bring down the minus 5. Distributing this negative changes those signs. So it's actually going to turn that into plus 5x and minus 2. Combine like terms. It looks like the only ones that are like are the constants. So x squared, then the plus 5x, and then I'm putting 5 minus 2 together to get minus 7.
Number 11, f of x equals x squared minus 12. g of x equals 12 minus x. Once we find f minus g of negative 10. So another way to write that would be each one of those separate. So f of negative 10 minus g of negative 10. I'm going to find them each separately. So F of negative 10 and G of negative 10. So let's see. Replace go to F. This time I am replacing, right? Because it's not an F of X. It's F of negative 10. So I need to replace this x with negative 10. So I have negative 10 squared minus 12. Negative 10 squared means negative 10 times itself, which is positive 100 minus 12, which gives me 88. The same thing over here with the G. Be careful here. I'm replacing this X with negative 10. So I'm going to have 12, then the minus sign. And then what am I replacing the X with? Good. Negative 10. So it's going to look funny because you've got minus negative, which is the, really the same thing as saying 12 plus 10. Because if you're taking away a negative, you're really adding, which gives you. 22. So I've got my solutions, and then I just need to go back and remember what I'm going to do with them. In this case, I'm going to subtract them. So 88 minus 22 gives me 66. Number 12. X squared minus 15. G of x is 6 minus x. This time, this one's a little different. I'm finding f times g. Let's see. Or F of C times G of C. So just like every single other one that we've done, we find these things separately. So I'm going to find F of C, and I'm going to find G of C. Once I get those solutions, I'm going to come back and multiply them together. So remember, it doesn't matter what this is, right? It can be a rainbow or a puppy. That's what you're putting in place of the X. So this time, it's just everywhere I see an X, I'm going to put a lowercase c. So let's see. If I do that, what is this going to turn into? Instead of X squared minus 15, it's just going to be C squared. Minus 15. I can't do anything. I can't put those together. So that's just as far as I can take that one. I'm going to come over here and find G of C. I'm 
putting the C here. So instead of six minus X, it's just gonna say six minus C. And once again, I can't put those together. So that's as simplified as that gets. Now I come back and say, okay, what am I doing with that? I'm multiplying them together. So I've got C squared minus 15 times six minus C. And when you're multiplying two things and they each have two terms in them, that means you're multiplying two binomials, just means two terms together. So in other words, I'm gonna FOIL first outer inner last, which is just a fancy acronym, right? It's essentially, it's just, you're gonna just distribute the C squared to both of those. And when I'm, so when I multiply a letter times a number, it just puts them together, right? That's what happens when you multiply a letter times a number, it just puts them together. So C squared times six, this gives me six C squared. Now be careful here, there's a couple of different issues. It's a positive times a negative. So go ahead and put your minus sign, right? Anytime you have positive times a negative, it will be negative. What is C squared times C? C to the third. Right, because what do you do with your exponents when you're multiplying the C's together? You add them and that one has a one. Good, so I have minus C to the third. Then I'll distribute this negative 15 here and here. So negative 15 times six gives me negative 90. Negative 15 times negative C, negative times negative gives me positive 15C. Now, I do need to clean this up. There's no terms that can go together because nobody has the same exponent. But it is going to say in this problem to type the polynomial in descending order, which means you need to rearrange it and put the highest exponent first. When I'm doing that, whenever you move terms around, you take their sign with them, right? So when the C to the third comes up front, it's still negative, right? So it's negative C to the third. So after the third, you need your squared and it's positive six C squared plus 15 C. And then the constant always comes last with that minus 90. Okay, one more like this and then we go into something a little different. 13, f of x equals x squared minus three. G of x is one minus x. And this time it wants me to find f over g of negative three. Or f of negative three over g of negative three. Oops, sorry, baby. I'm right? So if two goes into both of those numbers, it'll simplify it at three over two.
Now, these next couple of problems, it's still gonna start off by giving us two functions. f of x is x squared. v of x is 10x minus 10. And it wants me to find three things. The domain of the sum of those functions the difference of between those functions and the product of those two functions. Now, here's the thing. I don't actually have to go through. What's the sum mean I would do? Add those together, right? The difference means I would do this one minus that one. The product means I would do this one times that one. It doesn't ask you for those solutions. It just asks you what would the domain of those things be. Now, you can do all the legwork and add them, subtract them, and multiply them. But remember when we were doing domain work, whenever that was, Monday or last Friday or something? What were we looking for when we were finding the domain of functions? We were actually looking for restrictions, right? What X could not be. And where was that always turning up? If the x was in the bottom of a fraction, right? Because if the u, if your x is in the denominator, then there's going to be a restriction there because the denominator can't be zero. So with that knowledge, think about this. If I add these to get, are either one of these fractions? No. If you add two things together that are not fractions, you're not going to end up with a fraction, right? If you subtract this minus this, is it all of a sudden going to give you a denominator somewhere? No. What if you multiply these two things? Multiply them. This means I would do x squared times 10x minus 10. And distribute that. Is that going to give me a denominator anywhere? No. So all three of these, first of all, are all going to be the same always. And what you're looking for is if either one of your original functions has restrictions in it or not. If neither one of these functions have restrictions, then neither will the sum, the difference, or the product of them. So all three of these are the same thing. They're all, let's say, how do they say it? X is a real number. There is no restriction. Okay. And I think, I'm pretty sure, like, if you did to help me solve this in math lab, it's going to make, it goes through adding them, get an answer, subtracting them, get an answer. But if you think about it, what you're looking for is a domain. And if there's not a fraction with an X in the bottom, there's not going to be any restrictions on it. Yes, so look at, yes, but this on this particular one, it doesn't say we are going to have one like that. All right, let's look at the next one. Number 15. My f of x is 1 over x minus 3. My g of x is 7x to the third. It wants me to find the domain of the same three things, the sum, the difference, and the product. The hardest thing about doing this would actually be adding those together, subtracting those, and multiplying those. That's by far harder than 
thinking about what the domain would be of your solutions. If I added those together, I'd have to get a common denominator and change my numerator and all this other stuff. But if you add those together, your answer is going to have this denominator. So all you're really looking for is do either one of your original functions have restrictions? If so, what are the restrictions? Then that's going to be the domain of all three of these. So this one doesn't have a fraction, right? So I'm not worried about this. This is what I'm worried about. This has a restriction because what? X minus three can equal zero. So just set that up, solve it, which just means add the three to both sides. So what can X not be? Can it be three on any of these? So X is real and X cannot equal three. Okay, when you're working this one, did we have a problem already in the section that had a dot does not equal? I think we did. Did you see down there at the bottom when you're typing in your answer, it has this symbol for you to click on to help you type in your answer. So you just do the X from the keyboard, come down to the bottom of Math Lab and click on this symbol and then put three. All right, last one of this section, and then we're going to start 9.1 f of x is 3x minus 2. d of x is 2x minus 14. So neither one of them have restrictions, but this one's asking something different. This is what you're talking about right now, because this says find the domain of f over g. So when I write it like that, it is going to give me a denominator. So if I write it f over g, I'd have 3x minus 2 over 2x minus 14. And now I'm going to find the domain of this. So what needs to happen? 2x minus 14 can't equal zero. And then solve it for x. So add the 14. So 2x can't equal 14. And divide by 2. So X cannot equal seven. Okay, that wraps up 2.4. I am gonna start the next section, which is 9.1. We're just gonna do the first three. Nine point one is on what's called the composition of functions. So again, it's gonna add, it's gonna start off by giving us two functions, but instead of add, subtract, multiply, and divide, we're gonna find the composition of them, and I'll show you what that looks like. F of x equals x minus one. Okay, so D of x equals x squared minus five. We're gonna find f of g of negative two. So this symbol means composition of function. Okay, looks like it says false. When you are finding the composition of function, sometimes it says f of g, sometimes it says g of f. No matter what, here's where you start. You're going to find that first, just like we've been doing. So whatever is in this position is what 
keep mind first. So you just kind of forget about this. We're going to do it in a minute. You're just going to bring down the G of negative two. Just like we've been doing all day. This tells me to go to G, replace its X with negative two. So let's see, what will that give me? Negative two squared minus five. And then do that math, negative two squared gives me four, bring down the minus five, which gives me negative one. So I'm halfway there. Now, whatever this is, comes down. So I'm finding now the F of, Whatever that last answer was. <clears throat> so whatever this is now becomes your new problem. F of negative one. Just like we've been doing. Now I'll go to my F and replace its X with negative one. So I have negative one. Minus one, which gives you what? Negative two. So again, the steps are whatever is in this position is what you do first. It's going to give you an answer. You use that and you drop down the first part and find, put, plug that in there. <clears throat> All right, number two, similar. F of X is three X plus four. G of X is X squared minus two X minus five. This time it wants me to find G of F of seven. So remember, these can be any way. You gotta pay attention to that first. Doesn't matter which order it's in, you're always starting with whatever is right there. So just bring this part down, F of seven. So that tells me to go to my F function and replace its X with a seven. So I'll have three times seven plus four. So 21 plus four, which gives me 25. So now I drop down whatever in the front. I'm dropping down the G and I'm finding G of what? 25, which just says to go to my G function now and replace its X's with 25. So 25 squared minus two times 25 minus five. You can put that all in your calculator at once, right? If you type in exactly this, it'll do the order of operations and everything for you. So open parentheses, 25, and remember, you can just hit the X squared button to square that. Minus two, open parentheses, 25 plus, minus five. Again, if you type it in exactly like it's on the board, it'll follow the order of operations and everything for you, which gives me what? Five, six, 570. Okay, last one we're gonna to do today. F of X is three X plus two. G of X is X to the third. And I'm finding F of G of negative four. So 
Now, what am I finding first? G of negative four. Tell me to go over here to G and replace that X with negative four. If I do that, I have negative four to the third, which gives me negative 64. Now, what am I finding? Good, good. F of negative 64, which means go to F, replace this X with negative 64. So three times negative 64, plus two, so three, open parentheses, negative 64, close, plus two gives me negative 190. All right, we will wrap this up.